Hello everyone, it's Akaturius here and I welcome you to this new video. Today we are going to talk about two level 7 synchros that you can play in Crystrons. And before we start with that, I have to apologize for being on a hiatus for three months. I actually didn't plan to be on a hiatus. I wanted to actually release like a channel update and work more on Paradise and get that out. But I kinda dropped my motivation somewhere and didn't find it and now things have changed and <laughs> yeah. Well, sorry. However, today we are going to talk about Shooting Riser Dragon, as it is right here, a V-Jump promo card that has been announced in March, and FA Dawn Dragster, the new FA synchro coming out of Flames of Destruction and how they complement Crystrons and their playstyle. Naturally, as a V-Jump promo card, we won't get Shooting Riser Dragon in a timely manner, However, we can already discuss how the card performs as it is, though we should remember that we'll wait for this card maybe a long one. But without further ado, let's start with Shooting Riser Dragon. Shooting Riser Dragon is a generic level 7 Dragon Synchro Tuner with the following effects. If this card is Synchro Summoned, you can send one monster from a deck to the graveyard with a level lower than this card on the field, and if you do, reduce that card's level by the sent uh, reduce this card's level by the sent monster's level, but you cannot activate the effect of that monster or cards with the same name for the rest of a turn. You can only use this effect of Shooting Riser Dragon once per turn. Once per chain, during your opponent's main phase, you can, quick effect, immediately after this effect resolves, synchro summon using this card you control. Well, as we can see, it offers us exactly what we want the tutor synchro to offer, the ability to synchro during the opponent's turn. However, that would be actually awkward with its level being 7, which is handled by the first effect. Looking at Crystron specifically, our searches Crystron, Twister and Smiger are both level 3, so sending them to back this card level 4, the same level as Crystron Quan decks, our very own Crystron uh, Synchro Tuner. We can also make it level 3 by dropping Rosenix, level 2 by dropping Sulfafnir, or level 5 by dropping Presyol. So we have options on how we want to use this card. These options, however, are mostly for fashion purposes though, as our primary target will always be Crystal Twistmer most of the time, as that card gives us the setup in the following turn. Alright, now let's look at the advantages and disadvantages, shall we? Well, first off, it's a Needle Fiber target, and a very, very good one at that. It offers a setup in form of a mill, like with by milling Twistmer, which we can use in the next turn to search, and its effect is. <laughs> <coughs> its effect restriction doesn't really affect us at all, and its level ranges from 2 to 5, making it actually very versatile. Bad things are, well, it's needle only. I mean, it's not really needle only, because we can summon it ourselves, but summoning ourselves is very awkward because it's level 7, and it's not a machine, so that one's out. So it's kind of needle only alongside TG1 a magician. Also, its Synchro Summon effect only works in the opponent's main phase, which is also something that has in common with TG1 and Magician. Which is kind of bad, because we kind of want to use the Synchro Summon effect on the battle phases as well, but we can't, because, well, it doesn't let us. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Alright. But that's actually all of the downsides I could think of. Generally speaking, this card is not Synchrostron. Being summoned off Crystron Needle Fiber, it triggers its effect to get Tisfern into the graveyard and then go further into Crystron Quarry and Gundrex with a classic must rule for Needle Fiber combo. No matter how you look at it, this card adds more consistency and a better follow up to the deck than it already had, which is actually a blessing for all of us Crystron players. Alright, now that Shooting, Dra uh, Shooting Rise of the Dragon has been covered, let us look at FA Dawn Dragster. Just like the card before, it's a generate level 7 synchro, this time is not a tuner but a machine, which changes things up for us. It has 380k for, uh, uh, per level, like all FA monsters do, it has piercing damage and it can gain a level if FA spell or effects are activated, but where it really shines is with its last effect. Once per turn, when your opponent activates a spell trap card or effect, quick effect, you can reduce this card's level by 2, and if you do, negate the activation, and if you do that, destroy that card. Basically, this is a spell trap negation for free, and considering the last time we got such a generic spell negation, which was number 38, Hope Homager Dragon Titanic Galaxy, this is pretty crazy. That actually is not the only crazy thing about this card, though. From a Crystal player's perspective, as this card is easily summoned with the usual combo using Crystal C3 and Sulfafnir, rarely Rian and Rosenix, and easily resummon with uh, Magna Reverse, and this last part is what actually makes this card so good. 
With the usual combo, you can first go into F8 Dawn Dragster with Crystron C3 and South Fafnir, then take Needle Fiber up of a shooting Ryzer Dragon we have discussed before, which drops the Crystal to this burn to, dis uh, to like replace the South Fafnir next turn. <coughs> we need the uh, Ryzer to be level 4, because, well, we can use this and um, we can rise, use Ryzer and Dragster to go into a Phoenix after Dragster negated because, well, it loses two levels, so we don't need a level 2 Synchro Tuner, but a level 4 Synchro Tuner, which is why we drop this burn and not self Fafnir. And, yeah, you negate a spell, then you banish all spells and traps, and if you have, like, um, Magnet Reverse out, you just flip it, get Dragster back, and you can negate another spell, which is pretty neat. Plays like these can be actually really good against spell heavy decks, like 2 Draco or Sky Striker, aka Brandish Maiden, which is a very nice layer of counterplay to have. But before I lose myself too much in words, let's go right into the pros and cons. Well, for once it has free spell trap negation. I know I've covered that already, but it's good to cover that again. It's very easy to summon thanks to being a machine, and sometimes I think the piercing can matter if it's not for the minuscule stats it has. For the negative points, well, it's level 7, and level 7 is actually an awkward level to direct sync and Crystrons, mainly because we have to um, sacrifice our uh, self Fafnir with that. If we don't get a drop Fist Burn or self Fafnir uh, of Riser, that's a pretty bad thing, so Dragsters only go while we have Riser available, because otherwise we just kill our self Fafnir. We can also have, uh, we can also make this if we have Scrap Recycler or another Mill card on our hand to for the next turn, so we have set up for the South Fafnir, but we really need to look at that South Fafnir. Next up, Crystal Phoenix is actually not an optimal follow-up play, because, well, it does resummon Dragster once it's popped, but banishing all spells and traps in this game, which is really monster-centric, is not that great. And as mentioned before, its stats are pretty minuscule. What I mean by that is, 2100 attack is nothing you use to like impress someone. And 1500 attack is even less something you would use to impress someone. So yeah, that's what I mean with the uh, piercing might not always matter, but sometimes it might be enough, just enough to close out the game. Alright, before anyone mentions that we can also drop Pressior all of Riser Dragon to go to Stardust Warrior, that in itself is right. But you need to remember that, wait, let me put this up first. You need to remember that in that scenario we'll be, we will end up using Crystron Self Fafnir, like we just used Self Fafnir, we didn't recover it, because we used that from a Synchro Summon of the FA Dawn Dragster. However, all in all, this card makes for a pretty fun addition to the Crystron Extra deck. It's not re as required as shooting Ryza Dragon, which is definitely a staple, but it's a good card nonetheless. Alright, and with all that being said, I'm gonna take the last minute of this video to inform you that I have actually gotten started on using Twitter. I'm not the most active person in the world, but for what it's worth, you can always follow me. The name's Nico Trios, but there's also a link in the description. Alrighty then, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please do not refrain from telling me your own opinions about these cards and the future of Tristrons. Next up is probably an updated deck profile, so look forward to that. There might also be something else in cooperation with Aura Storm, but you will see once it's done. However, thank you all for watching this video and stay Raven.